Hi, in today's video, I want to talk about something completely random, but quite interesting in fact. Basically, I have this new setup with me that I'm experimenting and I wanted to find something interesting to talk about. So this is what I'm going to talk about today. So here I want to show how the Dirac Delta function can be approximated by a normal distribution. So I'm going to talk about what a normal distribution is, but first let me define what is a Dirac Delta function. Some of you might know, if you do not know, let me define the Dirac Delta function for you. So if I draw the, let's suppose the x axis. So on the x axis, the function can have a two values. So it can have a value of, let's suppose infinity or it can have values of zero. So this is the value of zero everywhere. So let's suppose it has a value of infinity and x is equal to zero in that case. I define this Dirac Delta function fx as that function which has a value of infinity at x is equal to zero and it has a value of zero everywhere else. Along with this, it also has the interesting property that if I integrate this function from minus infinity to plus infinity fx dx, then this comes out to be exactly equal to one. That means the area of this curve that this function projects onto the x-axis is exactly equal to one. Now in mathematics, this function has many, many interesting properties, but I'm not going to talk about all of that. What I want to show is very simple. This graphical sort of a representation of what this function is, the Dirac Delta function can be approximated by what is also known as another function or another distribution, which is known as the normal distribution. So I'm going to tell you what a normal distribution is. The normal distribution is actually a very common distribution in our day-to-day -day life. I'm going to give you an example. So let's suppose that I have a class of 50 students and I take a test of 100 marks. Now in my class, uh, if it is a sample of random students, in that case, uh, some of the students might be very good. They may get, get very high marks, let's suppose in the 80s and 90s. And some of the students might not necessarily be that smart and they might get very less marks, let's suppose 10s, 20s, 30s. But vast majority of the students might get marks. In fact, they will get marks somewhere centered around the middle, somewhere centered around what is known as the average, maybe in the 40s, 50s or 60s. So this kind of a distribution of marks, if I represent in a histogram, the histogram is going to look something like this. So on the x-axis, you have the distribution of marks and on the y-axis, let's suppose I have this kind of a histogram where uh, the histogram represents the different slabs of marks that are possible. And the height of the histogram basically represents the frequency of the data points or basically the number of students who have got marks in that particular range. All right. So this is known as a normal distribution. In fact, this kind of a distribution can also be found in other very common examples. Let me give you two quick examples. Let's suppose I select a random group of men out there somewhere. Uh, then I will find that uh, if I look at the height of all of the men, then some of the men are going to have some of the men are going to be very, very tall. They're going to lie somewhere here. And some of the men are going to be very, very short. They're going to lie somewhere here. But the vast majority of the men are going to have height somewhere around this average or somewhere around the mean. Similarly, if I take another sort of a, uh, example, like if I perform an experiment with a simple pendulum. So if you know, you know, a simple pendulum is a point mass hanging with a thread, which basically oscillates in this particular manner. If as a scientist, some scientist makes measurements of the time period of this simple pendulum, then uh, the time period can be measured by a stopwatch. So if you have a stopwatch and you try to measure the uh, time period of one oscillation, then basically every time you may have a little bit of a variation in your measurement because why you may have a human error um, the moment i start the stopwatch and the moment i stop the stopwatch might be different in each case there might also be differences in the actual time period because of various other reasons uh, so if you look at take a look at all the observations and you find out the mean the mean is going to lie somewhere here let's suppose this mean is around x naught and if you look at the uh, 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 error associated with the mean for every single measurement 
as the error increases the number of data points will become lesser and lesser on one side the number of data points will become lesser and lesser on the other side vast majority of the data points are going to lie somewhere here in the middle so this example of a distribution of the marks of a class of students the distribution of height of a group of men or even taking readings in a particular observation like the measurement of time period in a simple pendulum can be represented by a histogram in this particular manner if you draw a curve associated with this histogram then this will look something like this all right so this curve is basically uh, uh, known as a gaussian curve or a bell curve sometimes or just simply a normal distribution now why i may mention these examples is that because this kind of a curve is actually quite common in many day-to-day -day physical uh, situations but there is a mathematical equation that can replicate uh, uh, this kind of a curve when we plot a distribution for a very large sample size and the mathematical function is basically fx is equal to one upon sigma square root of twice pi e to the power minus x minus x naught whole square of 2 sigma square what is x naught x naught is the mean or the average of all of these uh, data points let's suppose x naught is 0 just for the sake of an easy calculation so this is uh, what is known as the normal distribution or the gaussian a curve now what I want to show is that we can approximate the direct Delta that I showed just now a little bit before we can approximate the direct Delta using the normal distribution under certain circumstances now before I tell you what those circumstances are let me explain to you what this uh, symbol Sigma represents the Sigma is known as the standard deviation what is the standard deviation so the standard deviation quite simply put basically gives you an idea of uh, how the data points are concentrated around the average so it might be that most of the data points are concentrated around the average creating this kind of a steep kind of a graph in those cases the standard deviation is very very less or the data points might be spread out over a large region in those cases the standard deviation is very very high so mathematically speaking I can give you another definition of standard deviation for that let's calculate the height of this kind of a uh, 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 function the maximum height of this kind of a function let's suppose which is at x naught is equal to 0 so if I want to calculate the height of this uh, 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 function at x naught is equal to 0 then this can be said as fx is equal to x naught which is equal to 1 upon uh, sigma square root of twice pi e to the power minus x x minus x naught x naught is equal to 0 and x is equal to x naught so this is also equal to 0 0 upon 2 sigma square so this is nothing but 1 upon sigma square root of twice pi so this basically gives us the uh, uh, kind the height maximum height of the function which is found at uh, the average now if I say that the standard deviation is somewhere here at a distance of x let's suppose all right so at a distance of x the standard deviation so this is basically at x is equal to the standard deviation so uh, what if i want to calculate the height of the function here at this particular point where x is equal to the standard deviation so i can say that f at x is equal to the standard deviation is basically going to be equal to 1 upon sigma square root of twice pi e to the power x is equal to sigma x naught is equal to 0 so sigma square upon 2 sigma sigma square sigma square square gets cancelled you are left with 1 upon sigma square root of twice pi and you end up getting e to the power minus half so as you can see here this term is basically the same as this particular term which is nothing but the height of the function the maximum height of the function around this uh, uh, average point here all right so I can define the standard deviation as the distance from the average at which the function has a height of e to the power minus half multiplied by its total height. So this is how I can define the standard deviation again. So the standard deviation can be defined as the distance from the average at which the function has a value of 1 upon square root of e multiplied by the height. So 1 upon square root of e times the maximum height of the function 
that it can have around the average so this is how you can technically define the standard deviation now what i want to show is that what happens if the standard deviation of a normal distribution changes if the standard deviation of the normal distribution changes the spread of the normal distribution also changes so let me show it to you by drawing a couple of curves here so let's suppose again i have the x-axis here all right and here i have the functional value so let's suppose that i draw some kind of a, a, a normal distribution a very simple normal distribution okay so this is a normal distribution with a wider spread and a higher standard deviation what if i want to draw another uh, 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 normal distribution having a little bit of a smaller standard deviation the, in that case the majority of the data points are going to now concentrate around the average so you can have this kind of a curve all right so this is another Gaussian distribution with a lower standard deviation now I can even decrease the standard deviation further so if I decrease the standard deviation further what is going to happen the data points are going to concentrate around the average again so I can have something like this yes all right if I again further decrease the value of the standard deviation then a standard uh, then the curve is going to become something like this all right so as you can see what is happening is that the the normal distribution is becoming thinner and thinner with decrease in the standard deviation so finally what you can get is you might get a situation where the normal distribution is very very thin around this average point so that it's going to replicate the direct delta function so as you can see here if i if i if i take this example uh, the standard deviation for this particular graph all right let's suppose this is sigma 1 and the standard deviation for uh, this particular graph let's suppose this is a sigma 2 so in this case sigma 2 is basically uh, less than um, sigma 1 here all right so as the uh, standard deviation decreases the curves become thinner and thinner and all the data points are uh, uh, concentrated around the average so in a way you can keep on decreasing standard deviation so much that the normal distribution starts replicating the Dirac delta function also I did not mention that if you do an integration of this particular function so if you integrate uh, 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 the normal distribution fx dx over minus infinity to plus infinity then this integration if you solve it will also give you a value of one so this is what i wanted to basically demonstrate that a normal distribution with decreasing standard deviation so if i write the normal distribution as let's suppose let's write it down sigma root over twice pi e to the power x minus x naught minus the whole square upon 2 sigma square so if i put a limit over here where the the sigma is tending to zero then this can basically approximate a dirac delta function so technically speaking if you look at this particular sort of a normal distribution with smaller and smaller uh, values of standard deviation the uh, 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 the normal distribution is going to become thinner and thinner in shape and it's going its height is going to keep on increasing so its height is going to become near about infinity so you end up getting this this kind of a function which has almost zero thickness and the height of infinity while at the same time the area under the curve tending to be equal to one so this is the simple thing i wanted to talk about while i experimented with my setup so a normal distribution a very common distribution in mathematics where the standard deviation tends to zero uh, will approximate a dirac delta function which is another a very unique sort of a function in mathematics so that's it for today uh, i'll see you in the next one thank you very much